What's up y'all, let's learn Vim today. In this video, I'm gonna take you from a Vim scrub to a power user without any time wasted. So here's how you should use this video. So watch it to the end to get an overview and a feel of what you can do with Vim. And then come back and work your way through the commands in order, moving on to the next one as you master them. So let's get into it. All right, so first is four main modes in Vim. There's a normal mode, insert mode, visual mode, and command mode. The mode we're in now is normal mode. You can see the mode right here at the bottom of the screen. So this mode is where you perform your Vim motions, i.e. moving and gliding around your file. So note that Vim tries to keep everything in your home row as much as possible. This is why moving up and down and left and right is all done using the H, J, K, and L keys, not the arrow keys. K and J move up and down respectively, and then use H and L to move left and right respectively. Now you can see I can move around like this one character or line at a time. If I want to edit this file, I can press I to enter insert mode. This will put me to the left side of the cursor. Whenever I'm in insert mode, I can go back to normal mode by pressing escape. Now I'm back to normal mode and can move around as I want again. Now if instead you want to enter insert mode to the right of the cursor, you can press A instead. So we got I for insert and A for append. Okay, so now that we've made edits to this file, we might want to save it. To do this, we first press colon. Here we've entered into our third mode, which is the command mode. Here you can type in a command and then press enter to run the command. For us, we want to save, so this is W for write. We can also quit the file with Q. We can even chain these together and do a write quit like this. All right, so we now we've learned enough where you can actually do anything you want within a file, including saving and yes, even exiting. I'd say this is a good starting point. You might want to start with these until you've got your black belt in these Vim motions. But with just these keys, we're pretty gruelingly slow to move around and edit. And this isn't why you're learning Vim, to be gruelingly slow. You want to be fast. The magic of Vim really comes from here on out, which are the shortcuts, jumping around, and all around smooth as butter Vim motions. So suppose I want to be Speedy Gonzalez here, and I want to move back and forth one whole word at a time, instead of one character at a time. Well, if we press W, we jump forward by one word. B, one word back. W for word, B for back. But even that may not be ideal, depending on where you want to go. Suppose I want to jump to a specific place in this line. Let's say I want to jump to the closing bracket. The F or find key will do that for you. Press F and then the character you want to jump to. So a concept I can introduce now is the shift modifier. You can think of shift in general as a modifier for a command. It'll tend to do something similar to what the command does normally, but in a sort of modified way. So with F, shift F will allow you to do the same thing, but backward, i.e. jump to a character behind you. If we press Shift W, for example, we jump forward by white spaces rather than words. Here you can see the difference. If we press W, we move through this line like this. And if we reset, with Shift W, we move forward like this, jumping from spaces rather than words. Now if you want to do the same thing in the backwards direction, we use Shift B. Same thing, but applies it in the opposite direction. So what happens if we use our little friend the shift key with the insert and append commands we learned earlier? Well, pressing shift I will put you into insert mode with your cursor at the beginning of the line. Shift A will do the same thing, but at the end of the line. Nice. Now, while we're at it, if I want to insert not at the current line at all, but at the next line, we can press O to insert a new line below and enter insert mode on that new line. All this in one key, that's really useful. And of course we can modify this with shift again. Now shift O will create a line above and enter insert mode on that line. Notice these two motions are smart enough to put you in the proper indent too. So speaking of modifiers, there's also number modifiers. For example, remember that K and J move the cursor up and down by a line, but I can also jump N lines at the same time by pressing a number and then let's say J. So if I wanna jump five lines down, I press five J. 10 lines up, 10 K. Same thing with B and W. If I want to jump by four words ahead, I just press four W. Similarly, four spaces ahead and it's four shift W. Now we're getting fancy. We're using two modifier keys in one motion. If I want to find, for example, the second E, two F E will get you there. 
Honestly, once you get more comfortable with Vim motions, chaining and modifying them becomes really intuitive. All right, now if you don't want to jump by n lines, you can also just jump to a line number directly. To do this, just type the line number and then press Shift G. I think of this as G for go, i.e. go to the 12th line. Now sometimes I want to just grab something from that line or edit it quickly and then go back to where I was. I can do that with Control O. So you can see we jump back to the last line that we were at. And you can do this continually until you get back to your first position. Now, if you just press Shift G without a number first, this will take you to the bottom of the file. If you want to go to the very top, just press GG. So keeping on the theme of vertical movement, sometimes you don't know exactly what line you want to go to. You're kind of scanning a file, trying to find something. For this, we can press Control D to go down or Control U to go up. Here I'm jumping about three quarters of the page up and down. So far, I hope you're seeing a pattern here. A lot of the motions are mapped to sensible keys. D for down, U for up, G for go, I for insert, and so on. It's a good way to remember the keys you need. All right, so now that we got movement down pretty well, let's look at how we can modify the file with Vim motions as well. So the D and C keys are really important and useful for this. These are the delete and change keys. These operate pretty much the same, except the C or change key will end the motion in insert mode while the D or delete key will keep you in normal mode. Now these keys you generally chain with another motion, like ones we've already learned above. So if I wanna delete up to and including the first E character on this line, I can chain it with the F command we learned above. So D, F, and E will delete from the cursor to the first E in this line. Remember C is similar, so C, F, E will delete up to the first E, but you'll be in insert mode at the end. Now I can just start typing. Now we can undo any of these edits by going back into normal mode and pressing U, or redo them with Control R. We can also use T instead of F. I think of T as till, like until. So if I press DTE, I will delete everything just before the E. I like to think of these chained motions like partial sentences. So DTE is delete till E. Or we can D2TE, which is delete twice till E. Now really useful motions are deleting in between or changing in between. So for example, CI and then the quotation mark. I just deleted everything inside this string and I can start typing what I want. So this is like change in between quotation marks. I don't even have to have my cursor inside the string. It will find the next string on the line and bam, I can start typing. This works for any brackets too. You can also delete the current line with DD or even delete the next four lines with 4DD. Same thing applies with CC. Note that when you're deleting or changing these lines, you're also copying the code into the register. This is kind of like the clipboard. Then from normal mode, you can press P and paste anything you've deleted. All right, let's take a look at the last mode we haven't touched yet really, which is visual mode. This is essentially highlight mode. You press V to enter visual mode. And as you can see, it shows that we're in visual mode down here. Now when moving around, we start highlighting different pieces of our code. We can use our shift modifier here as well. So shift V will highlight the entire current line. Now whatever is highlighted is what we're gonna be operating on. So if I press C, I deleted everything highlighted and entered insert mode. One thing you could do while highlighting some code is press Y to yank. This is essentially copy. And you've just copied everything that you've highlighted. Okay, so finally, let's check out some useful commands we can do in command mode. So forward slash lets you scan the current open file, like control or command F in a regular editor. Here I can search for some string and then press enter. To jump to the next match, we tap N. To jump to the previous match, you can probably guess what it is. It's shift N. And we can also do a find and replace. For this, we enter command mode with colon and type percent S forward slash. Here we type the string that we want to replace and then forward slash again for the string we want to replace it with and press enter. But be careful, this will only do it once per line. If I have this string appearing multiple times in a line, it'll only replace the first match. We can append a slash G to the command for global and this will now replace all matches. You can get a bit more specific as well if you want to replace text within a certain area. So if we highlight a certain piece of code and press colon to enter command mode, now our commands are gonna apply only to the highlighted area. So if we type S again to search and our values as before, you can see that we only replace the values in the highlighted area this time. 
All right, so I'm aware that this is a lot of stuff and it kind of comes at you fast. But like I said, that's essentially the point of this video is to give you an overview and a feel for how NeoVim works and serve as a sort of encyclopedia where you can go back and choose a few commands that you want to work with. Note that this is really just the beginning. There's a lot more commands that you can do. But for now, thanks for watching.